several of you in the room, but for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Carl Sisson, and I serve as the Vice President for Advancement and Engagement here at the college. And I'm going to introduce a couple of special guests. Actually, I'll introduce one, and, and he will introduce our second special guest, uh, Bill Carpenter. Um, who, do you any of you remember listening to Mr. Carpenter in chapel last year? That's supposed to be a yes, live, right now, yeah. So, did a fantastic job of talking about his personal journey in the workplace, and um, he's going to be sharing, kind of taking off of that in more of a talkback format after this. So at 8.30, don't look at that clock, because that clock's still an hour slow to fast. Uh, at 8.30, he's going to be over in Chamberlain, what room? Chamberlain Mosaic Center. No, it's not, so we moved it. Yeah, so it's hosted by the Mosaic Center, but it's going to be in one of the Chamberlain classrooms. I think on the first floor. And uh, I'd encourage you to come over from eight, starting to 8.30 to hear. Um, it would be perfect. really good. Yeah, it is good. It is good. So Bill Carpenter serves as the Chief Executive Officer of the Regional Transit Service up in Rochester. Uh, he's been married to his wife, Maureen, for 42 years, and is the father to seven children, including Houghton graduates Jim, class of 2002, Peter, class of 09, John, 14, Michael, 17, and father-in-law to Houghton graduates Jackie Mark Mangus, class of 02, and Jill Majera, class of 17. So some of you may have overlapped with um, Michael and Jill. Um, Bill joined the RGRTA, I should have brought my glasses, in 2010 as the chief operating officer, and then he was named CEO in the fall of 2011. He oversees public transportation transportation for an eight-county area of 1.2 million people and 16 million customers annually. In his role, he significantly expanded the authority's reach. And RTS recently began serving Ontario County, bringing RTS's service area to 4,324 square miles. And through his efforts, they opened the widely anticipated $50 million transit center on budget and ahead of schedule, big accomplishment, trust me, in November of 2014. More than 10 million customers are now served in their national award-winning, this national award-winning, I can't say it, award-winning facility each year. In June, the board unanimously approved a complete redesign of the transit system in the Rochester area. And this new design will begin in 2020, June of 2020 and will feature frequent direct service in the busiest areas and customized on-demand service in many geographic areas. He received his bachelor's degree in math and economics from the University of Buffalo. He is president of the New York Public Transit Association, president of the Bus Coalition, board member of the American Public Transportation Association, and an elder in his church, the Joy Community Church. 
He has spoken to individuals and groups interested in learning more about white privilege and institutional racism with the goal of a more inclusive and equitable community. And that's what he's going to be talking about tonight uh, with the Mosaic Center. So please help me welcome Bill Carpenter. Thanks, Carl. And uh, I'm going to step, you don't need me, I'll, I'll, I'll do the opening. Uh, this is being filmed before a live audience, so uh, the louder you are, the more you'll be on the film. Uh, before I introduce Kelly, who really is the expert on the topic tonight, I just wanted to kind of run through my career. Uh, when I got done with college, I had no idea what I wanted to do. And uh, I was, uh, uh, had a wonderful woman I wanted to marry, and I uh, graduated in the summer of 1977. We decided we would get married Thanksgiving weekend. A very short engagement, primarily because my mother was OCD and we didn't want her messing up with the wedding plans. And uh, she felt uh, appropriately, my mother and father thought I should have a full-time job. I didn't think it was that important. I was just good. I would find one. And my first job was from my parents coming home from Mass one Saturday, having talked with someone whose son was a sales manager with Metropolitan. And I should go interview at Metropolitan B, uh, a sales representative for Metropolitan Life. And uh, didn't have the proactive behavior that I'm seeing here tonight to say, how can I go about doing it better than that Bill Carpenter? Uh, what I love about my four sons, the two daughters-in-law that have gotten a hope in education, is the liberal arts uh, element to it. Uh, and at least the experience I have from those six fine people is the focus is what is my purpose in life and if I can get paid for it, well that's okay too. Um, and that's really how I've searched out my career is what am I being called to do? Uh, sales rep at Metropolitan for about a year and a half and then Yellow Page Advertising for about three years, then sales management in the Yellow Page business. Then I went to work for a customer in the janitorial business. Is uh, general operations, general manager, division president. Uh, that company got sold to a national company. I started as regional vice president and then division president there. And when they wanted me to move to Philadelphia, we parted ways. I joined county government as a budget director. And when I left there, went to work as a chief operating officer for a software company. And two years later, joined RGRTA or RTS as a COO with the hopes to be succeeding the CEO who was going to leave a year later. So, a very clear path to get to where I am today, which is follow the call of God in your life. Uh, I have uh, some time when it's more testimony time, I'll talk about how I feel I ended up being called here. Uh, but the education you're receiving here, which is uh, how to identify your personal passion, how to live that out as a mission, and then how to present yourself to the world so that the world will receive you well, uh, is the skills that will take you into any career uh, and be successful. Uh, when Carl said, I'd love to have you talk about resumes and social media and those things that really help you get a job. It's like, <clears throat> well, I hope we've got an expert, uh, and we do. Uh, we've got over 900 employees. We serve an eight-county area. So Wyoming County, just north of here, is one of our counties, Livingston County. Uh, just a little bit over is another one. But Batavia, Genesee County, Albion, Orleans County, Monroe, Ontario, Seneca, Wayne County is our geographic service area. So Kelly is used to hiring for a lot of different positions. We probably have uh, over 40 different job descriptions amongst the 900 employees. Uh, and she is a person that receives all the resumes, does all the initial calling for about 150 hires a year. So tremendous amount of experience. She's got a great filter. Uh, she's going to let you know some of the things that she looks for in particular and things that when she sees them, mm -mm, not coming to work for us. So uh, hopefully if you do want to come work for us or someone like us, you'll hear not just what you should do, but some of the things to avoid. So please give a warm welcome to Kelly Davis. Thank you, Bill. Just 
how is everyone tonight? <laughs> All right, great. Um, so yeah, so as Bill mentioned, I'm the recruitment manager for RTS. I started in 2009. Uh, I actually started in our Seneca County regional property. Um, grew up in Seneca Falls, uh, lived there my whole life. Started in 2009, I was promoted in 2011 uh, to come up to Rochester to work for the Chief Operating Officer. Um, that was a big deal. Um, I had always uh, worked in an operations sort of position for my entire career. So um, prior to RTS, I did work at UPS for eight years. Um, and then I uh, went to RTS, worked as a dispatcher. I held many, many different positions dispatcher, um, you know, executive assistant. Then in 2015, I had the opportunity to go into human resources, which I can honestly say I never thought I would be in human resources. Um, so I've been in HR for the past four years, and I, I really love it. Um, I was, I became the recruitment manager a couple years ago, and I love my job. I love having the ability to give somebody a career. That is so rewarding. Um, so as Bill mentioned, we are a public transportation authority and these are the eight counties we serve. So within Monroe County, we actually have two different locations. We have RTS Monroe and they do our line service, which is hop on, hop off, you know, wherever you feel like. But we also have RTS Access. That is our paratransit company and we provide more of a curb-to-curb -curb service for people with disabilities. So I do the hiring for all nine locations. I'm kind of a one-woman show. It's kind of crazy, but I love it. Um, I um, hire about 150 people per year, and we have, um, as of Friday, 904 employees. So that's a lot. Um, so what I came to talk to you today about, um, we're gonna go over some resume development we're going to go over cover letters, interview prep and performance, and I'm gonna to touch on social media awareness, and then hopefully we'll have time, some time to go over questions, okay? All right, so first, who's gonna be looking for a job when you guys leave college? Show of hands. All right, all your hands better go up. All right, um, so how many of you have drafted a resume How many of you brought your resume with you today? Excellent. So it's my hope that you guys will be able to, you know, as we're going through the resume development piece, that you'll have the opportunity to kind of look and say, hey, did I do this or didn't I do this? Jot down some notes. If you didn't bring your resume, no problem. Um, just jot down some notes that you can take with you um, and make any adjustments that you might need. Okay, so resume development. Your resume is going to be the most important thing that you have when you leave college. In my opinion, to have a great resume, that's just gonna set you up for success, okay? It's the first impression that uh, you're giving an employer. So when you apply for a position, they don't know you. They don't know you, you know, from you from you. So. Having the components necessary on your resume is crucial. So um, the different components of a resume, so you're gonna obviously have your heading, that's just going to be your name, your contact information, you can certainly put your address, although you don't really have to have your address. Nowadays I see more and more people leaving it out. They just have their city and state, okay? Um, we're gonna go over the objective statement, um, I say this is optional, and um, some people are probably like, no, no, you've got to have it. Um, it is optional, and I'll go into that um, in, in a little bit. Um, professional experience, that is the body of your resume. It's the meat and potatoes. It's the most important thing on your resume. Um, education, I'm really not going to touch much on education. Obviously, you guys know what to list. Your college, um, your major the year you graduated if you want, you can leave that out. And then finally, your skills, certifications, and trainings. And of course, that's optional because you might not have any certifications or trainings to report on. Okay, so let's go into
into the objective statement. Um, so the most important part of this is it's a short, targeted statement that clearly outlines the type of position you are looking for and what you bring to the table. So the way, the reason I say it is optional is because a lot of people have the tendency to put an objective statement that means absolutely nothing. Um, they write, you know, something so broad and it doesn't make you stand out over any other candidate. So if you're going to put an objective statement on your resume, make sure it adds value. Okay, it's very, very important. And it also, it needs to be targeted. So if you're applying to 10 different positions, you need to have 10 different objective statements. Okay, very, very important. Um, what not to write. Business professional seeking position within your organization. I get this all the time. It, you know, it doesn't add value. You know, what type of position are you looking for? What organization are you looking to work for? So, like I said, um, instead of writing this, write something like this. So, the two examples that I'm going to show you guys are actually examples that I found um, for people who are recently leaving college. So, this first one, dedicated and motivated engineering graduate seeking entry-level assistance quality control manager position with XYZ company. It's short, it's one sentence, it's targeted. It's showing that you know you are recently graduated, it's an engineering graduate, you're looking for an entry level position and you're looking to obtain that position with, it, with that company. Okay, so it's very, very specific to the company that you're applying to. The second, hardworking business management graduate, with proven leadership and organizational skills, seeking to apply my ability to the position of junior assistant to the CEO at XYZ Company. Okay, so take a look at your objective statements if you even have them on your resume, and um, you know just kind of reevaluate and make sure that it does serve a purpose if you're going to use it. Okay, does anybody have any questions about the objective statement? So let's talk about the professional experience. So this is called many different things on a resume. Um, it can be called work history, work experience, career overview, whatever you want to call it, it all means the same thing, okay? So, um, and like I said, this is the most important piece of your resume. It's used to highlight your accomplishments and to show how you achieve results. So this piece is not meant to be a generic job description. Um, I say leave out pronouns, so you don't want to write, I did this, or I did this, or I did this, okay? You really want to use a powerful action statement to describe, well, while doing this, I achieved this. So you really want to be specific. You want to make yourself stand out over all of the other candidates who are applying for this position. Um, so it should also be in chronological order. Um, of course, you want to start with your most recent employer. Many, many times I'll get resumes, and the first thing they have listed was a job they had in 1997. I'm like, well, I mean, I care about that, but I care more about what you've been doing, you know, in the present. So chronological order, um, starting with the most recent, and um, a good rule of thumb is to go back 10 years of course, you might not at this point in your life have 10 years of work history, um, but that's just a good rule of thumb. So I want to give you guys an example of a bad work experience summary and a good. So here is the bad. So this person, um, they were an intermediate programmer and they worked for widgets, digits, software. So I program software, I tested software, I debug software, I worked in a team, I trained new grad hires. You wouldn't believe how many people write this. It's just like a bad job description and, and I don't want to see this. Okay, you program software, great. What kind of software did you program? You know, I tested software, awesome. What type of software? Um, when you debug software, you know, what, what did you achieve while doing this? So um, a better way to say all of this programmed award-winning educational software using the C++ programming language. I mean, that just sounds so much better. 
Um, you wrote quality assurance and software testing plans, product shift with 15% less customer support calls. If you guys can throw in statistics in there, even better. Um, facilitated critical support calls and solve customer issues and then manage the team. So you guys can clearly see, if you're looking at the first one versus the second, who would you hire? The second, obviously. Okay. Anybody have any questions so far? I got candy for questions. Yeah, we're going to go. <laughs> so for the next part, we're actually going to do a resume review, and I do have some handouts for everyone. So I wanted to be able to give you guys examples of resumes. Um, these are actual resumes that I have received. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. Thank you, though. And then Thank you. We should probably have an house. So these are actual resumes um, from people I have. These are actual resumes I have received. Um, they are all within the past six months. I like to keep them fresh. So I thought the best thing to do would kind of be, um, I'll project them on the screen, but I'm hoping that you guys can look at them, and then we're just going to go through them. We're going to talk about what's bad, what's good, and what's indifferent, okay? All right. So, thank you so much. All right. So, the first one we're going to talk about can you guys hear me well enough if I'm not the Okay. Um, so the first one that we're going to talk about is Michael Jordan. The uh, basketball player, not to be confused with We have a Michael Jackson. Jordan on campus, by the way. Yes, so okay. I've been told. And I'm like, what are the chances? I changed everybody's names. Like, obviously, I'm not going to give you their real names. So I kind of had a little fun with it. Um, I changed up people's names. All right, so take a look at Michael's resume. So right off the bat, who can see something? We've got candy. <laughs> Anybody who wants to answer? Not a lot of spell check going on in this room. Yes, not a lot of spell check. So many different errors. Um, he's got errors uh, with bulleting everything. Just horrible. Um, he, then he's got double bullets down under the training section. Um, yeah, so not not very much spell check going on. What else? Yes. The bulleting looks somewhat off in certain areas. Like one second, be like a couple spaces over. Yes. Yeah, so the formatting, very inconsistent formatting. That is huge. Um, when you guys are doing your resume, if you guys aren't like awesome at formatting and punctuation and grammar, um, send it along to a friend or you know. A uh, family member, there's even companies online who can proofread your resume for you. Um, definitely do that because you want to make sure it is perfect. Um, but I put this resume up here. Can you guys look at the uh, objective statement? Now, now Michael, Michael applied for a customer service supervisor position. You were going <laughs> to? Well, I was going to say something else. Part is that he doesn't have any subject in it. Um, so it's just, it's like something you'd say in passing. It's like you would really write on resume, but also uh, it's not so dumb. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Okay. So Michael's applying. He wants to be a hibachi chef, and he's applying for a customer service supervisor. When you guys are applying to a position, make sure, so I know people have different resumes for different positions, and that's totally acceptable. But when you guys are applying for a position, A, make sure you're qualified, and B, make sure that your objective statement and your resume matches along with the position that you're applying for. Um, clearly, we don't have any hibachi chefs at RTS. I don't know, Bill, you want to work on it? We're working on it. We're working on it. We're, working on it. Yeah. we're trying to hire one. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's really what I wanted to point out. There's th this whole resume is a complete disaster, <laughs> but that's the main thing I wanted to focus on, Michael. Um, all right, take a look at Gwen Stefani's resume. Now, the first thing I wanted to point out, Gwen's resume was four pages long. Okay, so I don't really have a, okay, your resume has to be this many pages, or it can't be over this many pages. However, 
if you're if you have a lot of you know great experience and you know that you just need four pages, that's fine. But you guys take a look at Gwen and let me know the first thing you see that might be wrong. Yes. And her first Thank you. She didn't capitalize her first. This is real, you guys. This is a real resume that I received. Um, she didn't capitalize her name. And then just continue down. She didn't capitalize her address and then high school diploma and Finger Lakes Community College. And at, before every comma, there's a space. So going back to grammar, punctuation, that is huge. I, as soon as I saw that, I'm like, no, you're done. You're done. Anything else that pops out on this? What about the big, bold letters? Oh, sorry, yes. For her work experience, it started right in 2006. Yes. And then went to exactly. She listed her work experience in reverse order. So she started out with something in 2005, and then she ended with, with her present position. So she put everything in the opposite order. Um, what about the big word resume at the top? <laughs> totally not needed. You guys, I know we know it's a resume. You don't have to write resume. So she probably used one of those templates that you guys can find online. Um, and there's so many out there, and they really are useful. They really are. Um, they have some wonderful templates out there. But know which stuff you should keep and which stuff should be gone. So you don't need resume. Um, and then one other thing that I wanted to point out um, is that she's very, very inconsistent. Like some of the jobs she lists, um, you know, just these long, long, long paragraphs. She doesn't give those exciting professional work experience. You know, she she has a lot of good experience. She just didn't know how to get that out in the right manner. So it's like kind of like, oh my god, I don't want to read all of these long paragraphs. So that's why I like to keep you know the bullets. It's very organized. Um, okay, let's let's be done with one second. <laughs> um, Luke Skywalker. So Luke actually, I don't know what position Luke applied for. But what do you guys notice about his? Thank you. Yes, I love that you got that. Different fonts. <laughs> I think it was. Was it yeah. One font. That's all that's needed. I promise you. One font. Um, he has at least three in here, and, and I can't figure out why. <laughs> Anything else? Okay, so take a look at his job as a regional sales manager for the Good Feet store. He worked there from February 2017 to October 2019. All right, that's fine. Um, then his next job, he was a senior team manager, but where and from what date? You know, then he was a sales and team manager at AT&T. Well, what dates? What were the dates of his employment? So. Again, very inconsistent. Um, you really want to make sure that you have all of those dates accounted for. So one thing I want to touch upon briefly is one of the things I look for when I'm reviewing a resume is gaps in employment history. So a lot of times I'll find that somebody may have left a job in 2015 and then they didn't start a new job until 2017 and they left that two years out. That's a red flag to me. You know, I wanna know, well, what did they do within that two years? So if you guys have a, a gap in your work history, you wanna account for it. So you either wanna account for it on your resume, which is totally acceptable, or in your cover letter, and we'll talk about that. So a lot of times people, um, you know, they, they have children, and they stay at home with their children while they're growing up or maybe they have to care for an ill parent, or you know their spouse goes into the military and they move away with them. So there's so many different reasons that you could have a gap in your employment history. Feel free to write that. Um, stay at home dad from 2015 to 2017. You don't have to list bullets of what you did change diapers, no. You don't have to do that. 
Um, but just at least account for it because it's nice. So it makes me not have to guess. You know, did they leave off an employer because they got fired? You know, just something like that. Um, so that's totally acceptable, okay? Um, and so he's just very inconsistent. He doesn't have his dates listed. Um, his education, he wrote high school or equivalent. I mean, if you're going to write your education, at least write what high school you obtained your degree from, okay? All right. Ah, Albert Einstein. So these resumes are getting better, right? <laughs> they don't look as horrible. Can anybody tell me why I would put Albert Einstein's resume up here? What do you think's wrong with it? Yeah. Yes. You guys, don't put your picture on your resume. Unless you're applying to be a model or an actor where it's crucially important that they see what you look like, I don't want to see your picture. Um, actually, it can be used to discriminate you know, on the basis of gender, of age, of race, or any other factor. I could take a look at this resume and say, oh my goodness, I do not like people with mustaches, I am not hiring this guy, and just move on. Like, it, it's very unfortunate. I would never do something like that, um, but you never know who's going to get your resume, and you just never know what can happen. So just don't open yourself up to that. Leave it off. It's not necessary. I find this most of the time with like marketing and communications um, applicants. They're trying to be fancy, and that's totally fine. You can be as fancy as you want, but please leave it off. As a matter of fact, if I receive a resume with a picture on it, I take it off before I send it to the hiring manager. They do not need to see what you look what you look like. Your skills and abilities have nothing to do with what you look like. Um, you know, you don't want to sell yourself based on your appearance. You want to sell yourself based on your skills and qualifications. Okay? All right. Uh, Justin Timberlake. Yes. Yeah. So, Justin's resume is pretty good. Uh, Justin applied for a health and wellness specialist position. And his resume, I really like the way it's set up. Now, I just want to remind you guys, there's so many different ways you can set up your resume. It doesn't matter how you set it up. All that matters is what the content is. As long as the content is consistent and accurate, that's really all that matters. So you can pretty much pick whatever you know you want to do. Um, I chose this resume because I wanted to point out, remember how I talked about the certification skills and training? I thought Justin did a really good job of listing that. So, you know, he lists, he lists, you know, where he obtained the training from and what it was. So that's just a really good way that you guys could do that. Um, his education is nice. Um, but what's something on Justin's res resume that might not be so good? I'll give you a hint. One we haven't, yes. There's email. Yes! <laughs> you guys are awesome. His email, so inappropriate. <laughs> Do you guys know how many times I get the most inappropriate emails? So we all set up our email addresses but when we were in like middle school and high school and we thought we were cool because we had all these cool friggin' sexy back at gmail.com. Not cool when you're applying for a position. So please take the five minutes it takes, go to Google and sign up for something else, okay? Um, so many times like I'm sometimes embarrassed for these people and they put this on their resume. What? It just makes you look really bad. So, yes, good job getting that one. I'm impressed. All right. So our last resume we're going to go over is oh, Abraham Lincoln. So basically, Abraham is an actual employee that I hired. He um, was hired for a SQL administrator position at RTS. And he, um, I just really like his resume. The, the font is just nice and clear and big. Um, it's very readable. His heading's perfect. Um, he, he accounts for all of his work history. There's no gaps. You know, it's, as soon as he leaves one job, he starts another. You know, everything is consistent. He uses those great um, action, um, you know, descriptions talking about his past experience, 
And um, he did something else that I thought was really cool. So do you guys want to flip to the back and look at his education? When he listed his education, so you guys know IT positions are very technical. Um, there's so many different facets of the IT world that he took the time to list some of his coursework. And I thought that was really cool. He also listed his GPA. So obviously, if you're pulling like a 2.0 in something, you're probably not going to want to list your GPA. However, um, he did really well in all of his coursework. So he took the time to write it all out. And that was really beneficial for us because you know, we might have been hiring for a SQL admin position, but you know, looking at while well, he attended the University of Colorado, oh wow, he took some computer graphics and computer animation courses. So it kind of just shows how much more experience he has in different parts of IT. Okay, yes? So I noticed he listed the Institute for Defense Analysis three times. Where is it? On the front page. Okay. So it's the same company, three different positions. Like, is, does it yes. more sense? So I would have preferred, so people do it one of two ways. They do it this way, where they write and bold the Institute for Defense Analysis. Technically, it would have been really nice if he, <laughs> watch out. That's what I was hoping for. Technically, he should have just listed it once and then broken up his positions. Good catch. Um, broken up his positions within that job instead of listing it three separate times. So he would have listed, you know, senior programmer analyst from, you know, June 2012 to 2014, and then just listed the programmer analyst and so on and so forth. So yeah, you want to try to put your, if you held different positions within the company, you just want to list them under that um, parent company instead of listing it separately because then you wouldn't notice like I did. <laughs> All right, does anybody have any questions about the resume? What you should and should put on your resume. Yes. Um, I noticed that some of these are two pages long, or I guess more. Is yep. there a requirement you say? Nope. So just as I mentioned before, there really isn't a requirement. Most resumes are between one and two pages. If you're kind of on the cusp and you're rolling over into the second page, don't put like a super small font <laughs> just so you can fit it on one page. It's better to have it legible than to kind of try to cram it all on one page. I, you know, it just depends on the position. I, we've hired VP level positions and they have four to six pages on their resume. Um, you know, just because they have so much experience and they want to relay the information. So I guess, um, no, there isn't, um, you know, you have to have this many or you have to, whatever is accurate for you to relay the information that you want to get out and make sure that it's, it's readable. Yes? What are your thoughts on abbreviations? So when you receive a resume, maybe for a job in a department that you don't know that much about, or you receive a resume and somebody is using all these abbreviations. Like have, acronyms? Yes, and you have no idea. I okay. Guess that's something that comes up in our office a lot, so maybe you could touch on So up. this is a perfect example. I am not an IT professional. I do not know what half of this means. So a lot of times when I'm recruiting for a position such as a SQL administrator, I work very closely with the hiring manager and um, essentially they review all of the resumes. If it's a position that I can't look at the resume and say whether or not this person is qualified, but I, I don't discourage you for leaving abbreviations off. Um, a lot of times, like the whole IT world is an acronym for one thing or the other. So, um, you know, it was necessary for him to write this stuff on his application. So I just worked together with the hiring manager and we reviewed the applications together. All right, so let's talk about the cover letter. So um, your cover letter goes hand in hand with your resume. Um, so I'm just going to talk about the purpose and importance. Um, I have a lot more to cover. I'm going to try to go through this quickly. Um, so the first thing you want to do, there's actually three components to a cover letter. The first part, or the first paragraph, is going to be you introducing your, yourself and how you heard about the position and what position you're applying for. Um, maybe you uh, saw your writing in response to an ad. Um, you know, were you referred by someone? Uh, did you read something in the news that said the company was hiring? 
Okay, so how and where you heard about the position. Second paragraph, which is going to be um, kind of the, the body of the cover letter, that's going to be describing how your qualifications match the opportunity. What you want to do, you want to have the job description and your resume and kind of like intertwine them. And you want to tell the reader, based upon what they're asking for, why you're qualified, okay? Um, and then the third paragraph um, or sentence is just going to be how they can follow up. Provide your email, uh, your phone number, and how they can contact you for an interview. This should not exceed one page. Um, I, I'm putting a limit on the cover letter. <laughs> I don't want to read a three-page cover letter. Try to keep, um, try to keep it to one. Um, so basically, you're just trying to communicate what you have to offer when applying for the position. And this does work just like the objective statement. If you're applying to 10 different positions, you will have 10 different cover letters. Keep that in mind. So um, uh, I didn't print this out for you guys, but this is basically just, um, I, I got this outline. I think I got it from Indeed. Um, they address it to Catherine New, HR Director. So you're probably thinking, well, how do I know who to address it to? Um, there's many different ways you can find out. You can look on LinkedIn. Um, most of the time, positions are posted on LinkedIn. You can see the <coughs> um, You can go to the website of the company who is um, posting the job and see if there's any contact information listed. You can call the company and say, hey, I'm really interested in applying for this position. Who should I make my cover letter out to? Um, if you can't find a name, it is acceptable to write it to hiring manager, HR director, um, you know, anything like to whom it may concern. Um, so in this example, uh, your advertisement for an HR assistant on Indeed.com, that's my qualifications. They're saying what position, how they heard about the position, and that they're really interested um, this cover letter I picked out specifically for you guys because it talks about, um, you know, I just graduated with this degree from this college and these are the courses I took. So I really like this example. Um, you can touch upon some of your courses and then start to list, you know, why you think you're a good candidate for this position. And please reference their job description. It's going to show them that you took the time to read the job description and that you meet the qualifications. Okay, so it's very, very important. And then finally, how you can follow up. I would love to share more with you. Please call me for an interview. Here's how you can reach me. Okay, I know that was super quick. Any questions on the cover letter? Yes? Uh, just uh, the school has this presentation, so those of you that have signed up, they'll be forwarding the presentation. So you said, geez, I can't read it yeah. that well. I'm <laughs> But you'll be able to, you'll be forwarded the presentation yeah, so you would, and, like, and Google is such a good resource. Just try to make sure that you're getting um, things from credible sources um, when you're looking. There's so, like, I, I pulled this straight from the internet, too. You know, good cover letter for a um, new person out of college or whatever it was. All right, 15 minutes. We can do this. All right, so I want to talk about interviewing. Um, so you guys have an awesome resume, you got an interview, great. So I broke this section up into three parts, pre-interview, during interview, and post-interview. Um, so let's talk about pre-interview. The first thing you should do is research the company. This is my number one. If you can write down anything, write this down. Um, 90% of the time when someone comes in to interview for RTS, we ask them, what do you know about RTS and what we do? And they tell us, oh, well, you drive buses around in different counties. Okay, well, great. But, you know, what else is going on? So I always tell people, please research the company. Go to their website. Their website is a wealth of information. Learn about their mission and vision and values. What projects are they working on? You know, if you were to go to RTS's website, you would learn about Reimagine RTS, you would know about the RTS way and our new values that we just rolled out in this really cool video. You would find out so much information and I can tell you that you will impress the interviewer coming in and knowing this information. There's always an about us 
section on the website. Um, take the time and do that before your interview, okay? Get the titles and names of your interviewee, interviewers. This will come in handy um, at the end, but it's just nice to know. Will you be interviewing with Bill Carpenter, the CEO? You know, it's just good information to have. Dress appropriately. This is key. So many times people will show up in jeans and a t-shirt and I'm just like, why? So you guys have all heard that saying, dress for the job you want, not the job you have. That is so true. Um, you know, I have people interviewing for all different types of positions. So no matter if you're interviewing for a bus washer or um, a director level position, dress appropriately, okay? Break off that suit. <laughs> Arrive early. So this is one of my pet peeves. I there, We have two receptionists um, at our office, and I always tell them when I'm expecting interviews, and I always say, well, if they're not here at least 15 minutes early, they're late. And they make fun of me because they're like, oh my God, no. But I'm kind of a stickler for that. You really want to be early. God forbid something should happen and you know, something holds you up, you want to give yourself enough time to get there, which leads me to my next point, um, know, know where you're going. Um, a lot of times you might have an interview for some place that you've never been before. Drive the route in advance. Know if there's any construction going on. Know if there's any detours. Know if there might be anything that might hold you up, okay? So know where you're going. And if you can't, because maybe it's in another state or whatever, um, just do your best to leave on time. Early. Leave early. <laughs> and then get contact information. Get contact information of the person who called you to set up the interview, because if for some reason you are running late, you can call them and let them know. Um, please don't wait until it's the time that you're supposed to be there to call them. Um, that's very frustrating. Try to call them as soon as you know that you know you will be late. During interview, bring extra copies of your resume. Um, this is just a good rule of thumb. There's always somebody who needs it. <laughs> cell phone, please turn your si your cell phone on silent or off, or leave it in the car. Whatever you have to do. That's a that's a distraction. I've had people. I've been interviewing people, and their phone goes off. I'm like, what? Um, speak clearly and make eye contact. There's nothing worse than some people going like this and they're trying to answer my question. And I'm like, what are they saying? I can't hear them. Speak clearly, make eye contact. See this picture? She's interviewing with four different people, okay? If you were to ask me a question, when you give a response, address all four people in the panel. Don't just speak at that one person or to that one person who asked you the question. Address everyone, okay? Come prepared with questions. So I gave you guys some example questions um, that you could ask. Many times this happens after the interview is over and they say, do you have any questions for us? So um, I'm not gonna go through all these just for time purposes. Um, I'm gonna tell you the couple that I like. How will the company help me be successful in this position? You want to know, when I start, are you guys going to throw me to the wolves? Or, you know, what type of training am I going to get? Um, so how are you going to help me be successful? What is your favorite part about working for the company? This is a great question. You kind of want to, want to find out about the culture of the company that you could potentially be working for. So asking them this question and hearing their responses, you know, if, if they have a hard time giving an answer to this, that might raise a red flag. Um, let's see, are there opportunities for professional development? If so, what does that look like? If you want to grow within a company, do they offer any sort of professional development, any training programs? Um, and the final question that is my absolute favorite is, is there anything about my background or resume that makes you question whether I am a good fit for this role? This gives them the opportunity where if they are having any question about whether or not you're qualified for the position, it gives them the opportunity to bring that up. Yeah, well, you know, Bill, I, we really were hoping that you had more experience in this, but, you know, we see that you don't. Then you can say, you know what, you're right, but I am more than willing to do what it takes to get this experience. I'll take time on in my own personal life to maybe do a training, some sort of development. So really good question for you guys to ask, okay? 
Um, still, during the interview, don't use slang or foul language. These are kind of um, common sense. Don't speak neg negatively of former employer. This is so important, you guys. If you had a boss at one point that was a jerk, don't ever bring that up in an interview. That just makes you look bad. It just reflects poorly on you. Um, you could say, you know, just keep the interview focused on you. Um, don't bring up anything like that. Um, don't discuss personal matters. So this is a whole other presentation in and of itself. Um, employers, there are some questions that employers can and cannot ask. I would encourage you to go online and do a little research about this. Um, they cannot ask you your age. They cannot ask you your ethnicity, your race, um, your marital status, if you're planning to have children, um, disability, anything like that. So shame on them if that does come up in an interview because they are not allowed to ask that. Um, regarding age, obviously some positions do require that you are a certain age. Like for a bus driver, you are required to be at least 21 years of age for 19A regulations and all of that. So instead of saying, how old are you, they could say, are you within the legal working age for this position? Okay, so there are ways around it, but they can't just come out and say, hey, Karen, are you gonna have kids within the next two years? Because that just looks like, okay, we can't lose her because she might you know, go, be going out to have a kid. So if they do ask any of those questions, feel free to say, I do not feel comfortable answering that, okay? They shouldn't be asking them, them though. Um, and finally, keep it real, be yourself. Um, we know you guys are probably gonna be quite nervous going into an interview, and we get that, we understand, um, but be yourself, give honest answers. Don't tell us what you think we wanna hear. We want to really know who you are, okay? And then post-interview, just two quick things. Um, Write a thank you note or email. Email is much more common, but remember I said at the beginning, get the names and titles of the folks that you'll be interviewing with. This is why. Um, many times people will just email me and say, hey Kelly, could you pass this along to so-and-so and so-and-so, um, you know, and thank them for interviewing me, um, and then I just forward it to them. Some of that are higher level positions. They'll actually write out thank you cards and mail them, um, which is great too. Did you have a question? No, I, I was going to say, when I interview people, if I don't have something within three business days, yep. forget about it. I've, written, I've written them off. <laughs> and I would have, the, the people that have impressed me the most send an email either that day yep. or later than the next. Absolutely. And follow up with a handwritten note. Yes. Those are the people who want the job. Yeah, absolutely. Show, show the initiative. Show that you're really, really interested. And, and he's right. I usually do receive something within the first 24 hours of the interview. You definitely want it to be timely. Don't wait a week and then send it. Um, and then follow up. So the interview process can be a very daunting process for certain positions, and it, it is um, something that could take a while. So um, maybe if you had an interview last week and you haven't heard anything, there's nothing worse than just sitting there wondering. Follow up. That's totally okay. Send an email to the person who set up the interview with you and just say, hey, I'm just checking in, um, ask them if they need anything further from you, and um, to see if, if they can provide you with an update. Totally okay. Any questions on interviewing? All right, and our last part is going to be talking about social media awareness. So, um, This is kind of like new for me, um, but social media is huge. You all have some type of what's up here. I'm sure you all do. Um, but some employers actually conduct social media checks on applicants and new hires as part of a background check. RTS does not do this. So basically, if a company decides that they're going to do a social media check on their applicants, they have to do it for all applicants. You can't just pick and choose who you're going to check the social media on. So RTS, we, cho we choose not to do these social media checks, but I will tell you, 
this is happening a lot. Um, so, you know, they're looking at your Instagram, your Facebook, your Twitter, all these different accounts. And you might say, well, I'm fine. I have a private account. It doesn't matter. If you post something online, it is out there. You might have a connection with a friend who knows so-and-so, who knows so-and-so, who saw this post and didn't like it, and they showed somebody, okay? So it's out there. Um, think before you post. Go back in your social media and kind of try to clean it up. I want to give you guys a couple statistics really quick. Um, this is according to Career Builder. More than half of employers have found content on social media that caused them not to hire. Over 50%, all right? 70% use social networking sites to research job candidates during the hiring process. That is a lot of companies. 48% um, check up on current employees. So you might think, well great, I have the job. I don't need to worry about it. Not true. There are companies who do look at their employees' um, social media and um, you know that whole thing where kind of like everybody's offended these days. Even if a coworker, maybe you guys are, um, you know, they follow you on Instagram and you post a picture and they don't like it and go to um, HR and complain about it, just be mindful of what you're posting. Um, and then finally, 34% have reprimanded or fired an employee based on the content found online. So um, here's an example. There's so many examples out there, you guys, of, of people who have been fired um, for stuff they post on social media. So ask yourself, is it really worth it? Um, this, this woman, her name was Connor Riley, or her name is Connor Riley. Um, she tweeted, Cisco just offered me a job. Now I have to weigh the utility of a fatty paycheck against the daily commute to San Jose and hating the work. So she's kind of like dissing Cisco and saying, oh my goodness, you know, I'm going to be paid great, but I hate the company that I'm going to be working for. Um, so basically they saw this tweet and they rescinded her offer. Um, so just something to keep in mind. I am going to leave you with that, um, but please, when you go home tonight and check your social media and make sure there's nothing inappropriate. All right, does anybody have any questions? We finished with time to spare. Anything interviewing, um, your resume. Uh, so like I said, so as Bill mentioned, this presentation will be available. You know, if you don't have your resume here tonight, take a bit, yeah. <laughs> um, I didn't notice any of the resumes having the LinkedIn address on there. Is that now, I assume that was an everyday thing. I, yes and no. I mean, I don't, I do a lot of hiring for bus operators, so there's not a lot of LinkedIn addresses on the uh, bus operator resumes. However, yeah, that is a really um, popular thing nowadays. Um, as I mentioned, we choose not to click on it because that's kind of us checking your social media. Um, but feel free. A lot of times um, people will apply and instead of uploading a resume, they upload this link and it takes us to your LinkedIn page where we can view essentially all of your um, employment history. For me, I want to see your resume. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can certainly include the, the link in the heading, you know, where you put your contact information. Yep, not a bad idea. Anything else? All right. That's it for Kelly. Thank huh? you all. So, they, we, they all have the ability to get a hold of you subsequent to. Right? Yeah, so absolutely. as questions arise, would you ever be willing to review? I your, was just going to yeah. say, if you ever want me to take a look at your resume when you're done with it, I love stuff like that. I love proofreading. I know I might sound nerdy, but absolutely. Feel free. I'll make sure um, you can get my contact information. Michelle, pitch. And Michelle, yeah. You want to make it a pitch to say, hey, we do this already on yeah, campus. Yeah, yeah, you know, we, we are there. Um, we are here on campus to help you with this. And um, Dennis Stack and I uh, work in the Office of Vocational Calling. And um, our our goal is to help you guys land, uh, not only create great resumes and cover a lot of the fight internships so that you can build your experience. So when you're a senior and you're applying to businesses like where um, with these folks work and the companies, you have the experience that you need. Um, and so we just encourage you guys to come see us. Um, 
you know, the sooner the better, and we'll help you get a resume. And if you want to get it proofread by Kelly after you, you get it organized and read, the more people that read your resume, yes. and the more feedback you get, the better off you are. And so we just encourage you guys to come see us so we can get you connected with those experiences and get those resumes and other letters started. So Kelly, this is a token of our appreciation. Oh, thank this you. Is for you. Thank you so much for sharing your Absolutely. time and expertise. Absolutely. Bill, thank you for setting this all up. <laughs> Great to have you here. And you can showcase how the college where you go to you know, right? Thank you so much, Carl. Again, Bill will be over in the Chamberlain at 8.30. So um, they'll be here at least for a few minutes if you want to talk, ask questions individually. Thank you so much for spending your evening time with us. Thank you for having me.